I have to say, I've, I absolutely love this film. You've just seen it now for the first time, haven't yeah. you? So what's your re reaction? Um, I feel like a, a huge sense of nostalgia because it was the most beautiful experience ever. We had so much fun, but it's, yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. There's, there's so many things in the film that feel very true to how it was to film it, you know, which, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> it was, yeah, so I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit overwhelmed and a bit. Well, I, sp I suppose that that's kind of the obvious question is that <coughs> you have the idea about making a film about a director's experience, but then it, it itself becomes a co-production in a specific location. So presumably it did evolve as you went along to an extent. Um, I'm afraid not. No, the, the, it, it was. Is a script. We shot the script as it was. I, I mean, there there are certain there are little sections which were kind of improvised um, during the making of the film, which are sort of slightly boxed in and were shot on digital, smaller digital cameras. Those were improvised by the crew, by the cast, as as we were filming. Uh, apart from that, we in a rather sort of boringly professional way, kind of shot the script <laughs> that Pavel and I wrote and, and stuck to it. Um, yeah. I, I love that there's so much certainty around a character who has so little himself and, and for whom the circumstances are kind of constantly changing around him, but in fact it was all nicely sort of laid out, as it were. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the character is sort of an amalgam of, of me, Pavel, and a few people we know. Um, and I th what I know about Pavel is, is he's someone who kind of goes with the flow and changes things as they go along. I'm, I'm, I'm much more um, uh, kind of uh, uh, anorakish, you know. I just, I work out in advance what it has to be done and then I, I do that. Uh, I'm, I'm not so... In my documentary work, I'm much more free, but uh, in feature films, especially when when you have to arrange everything in advance, what the location is, what the, how much, how many extras you're going to have, uh, what costumes they're going to be wearing, and so on. Um, there are directors who they, who turn around the day before and say, "No, we're not going to fucking do that. We're going to go to this location," and then everyone has to run around like uh, headless chickens to fulfil their wishes and so on. Um, I. I don't have the cojones to do that. <laughs> I, I, I just try and be a really nice guy and just do what, 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 what we've agreed to do. You know? um, I, I kind of feel I should become more of a bastard. You know, I should like, kind of... Yeah. No, 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 but maybe just once, you know, I should like, just try it, you know, be a real kind of... Put on some fucking jodhpurs and, like, slap <laughs> people. But, but, you know, I, I just kind of do what I'm told, yeah. From a story perspective, because I remember when I, I read the script, because um, I got sent the script from Ben and then I had the best casting uh, experience ever because we went for a cup of tea, didn't we? Somewhere in North London. And that was it. But uh, I remember reading the script on a tube and I was literally laughing out loud. And I was going, this is, this is, this is brilliant. And th I think that's also part of the nostalgia because you, know, you do that, you, you read a script and then you have the experience of filming it. Um, and so you're bringing to life, along with other people, what you were reading in the script that you were laughing at on the tube. And then two years later, you're kind of watching that on the screen. So it's all tied together, you know, that sort of three, well, two and a half years of, sort of my experience of my life. And it's true, th there's so many elements that, there's so many scenes that I was reading that I was laughing at out loud on the tube too, that are up there. And um, and yeah, that's I think that's feels quite <laughs> that's why I'm, why I'm so filled with nostalgia and spitting while I talk because I'm feeling so emotive <laughs> <laughs> about the whole experience. Sh she's a great character, and she's also really true. I mean, many years ago, I, I did some filming um, in during a war in uh, Georgia, and we had a fixer who had that same sort of. She was both very charming and. Utterly, you knew that she that she had a separate sort of agenda, which was about preservation and, and uh, her own interests. And these were th this was all right and good. That's what I love about her is that you don't mm. you don't feel that she's treacherous. You just feel she does what she has to do. Well, like we were talking w with Chopin in particular. Well, what we said was that this is a human being for whom the cause is more important than anything. It, d it doesn't mean that she's void of, of feeling or, or the ability to empathize, but. 
Um, but ultimately, her experiences and her life have taught her that the cause has to, must be the most important um, thing, entity of her life, uh, and I in order for for people to move on and have have you know for the the greater good of all. So did you always know? Can I just, so add, just add something to that because I think it's interesting. Um, how sometimes the, the dialectic between a performer and a director works. That's not what you thought at all. That's kind of not what I thought. It's not what I thought. I knew you thought that, and I let you think it. Because, <laughs> because I, would, I would say, you sort of do, you know, can we just do one? It's a bit less, where you give a bit less away. <laughs> and then, but somehow in the back of your eyes or whatever, there is that kind of feeling of compassion or of some kind of feeling. But I, I kind of... I took it away from the more obvious side of your face, let's say. And, and it's somehow still there because you're thinking it inside, even though you're wrong, in my view. <laughs> uh, but th this is the, the kind of thing that sometimes works beautifully where you know, the actor and the director, they don't have to have the same opinion. They should disagree sometimes. And, and some, I think it's a great performance for, for many reasons, but one of the reasons is because there's that, that stripping away from my side and the, the the heart that's coming through from Miana's, yeah. And of course, there's you know a whole series of other opinions that come in on that when when they see that. Now, did you always know Ben that where you were going to film? Um, yes, it was clear um, r right from the beginning that it would that it would be Georgia. Yeah, this is um, it's a, it's an amazing country. It 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 has beautiful landscapes. Uh, as actually. We should apologise to Georgia. Uh, t two things. Two things. First of all, Sam, the producer, said that we should thank Georgia and the Georgian people because in in Georgia, there's weird things happen that the film has not been really shown yet, apart from in the one festival. And there's a kind of paranoia that exists there that, that there's some people saying darkly into their moustaches that um, that the Georgian producer just took the money and didn't make a film. Um, you've seen the film, right? If exists. He made the film. <laughs> he worked 23 hours a day, the poor bastard, to make this film. And the idea that some people are saying that he didn't make it is a, an outrage. Anyway, we made the film in this very beautiful country, which we, we took the worst parts of Tbilisi, the worst parts <laughs> of, the, of this very beautiful and interesting city, and put them on the screen. And I apologize for that, because actually Tbilisi is a beautiful... A uh, romantic town and um, has great food, great wine, good culture, and 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 go go there and enjoy yourself. It doesn't look like um, the place where Matthew McFadden gets lost when he gets off the bus. Those places exist, but they're very um, rare, and it's actually a beautiful place. Yeah. What was your impression when you arrived there, Mia? Um, uh, Georgia was magical. I think it's one of my favorite places to have filmed in ever. But there was this sense of, <coughs> I remember arriving, most planes, don't they, Sam? They arrive at sort of three or four in the morning. There's some weird kind of, th yeah, th so all your flights arrive at three and four in the morning and you're a bit discombobulated anyway. And I, rem <laughs> I remember I, I, uh, I we landed and as we were landing, somebody went, here, let me take your bags. And I went, oh, thanks, that's so nice. And then suddenly they were running off towards a van. <laughs> And um, and I was sort of running off to going, uh, my, uh, yeah, no, no, f yeah, forget about the bags. F yeah, I don't, I don't need the bags. And then somebody else went passport, and I went, oh yeah, of course, here's my passport. And then they went, they sort of ran off with my passport, and I went, fuck. And then, and then all of a sudden uh, they were sort of, no, again, I I got put in a van. I was being driven in a sort of third van off somewhere. My passport's in one, my bags are in another. I'm going towards the third, and I was going, has could this possibly be going really? wrong <laughs> like I like what the fuck's happening here I don't know and I was going is it you know that how horrific to even have that thought and we arrived in this sort of building and I came through and there was this lovely smiling man <laughs> who went here's your passport and your bags and welcome to Georgia <laughs> and um, and it was the it was the welcome lounge but because obviously I was so ignorant and couldn't speak the language I hadn't understood <laughs> what they were saying so the fact that the thought could even enter my head that they were not just being anything but incredibly welcoming, incredibly helpful, was outrageous, and I was shamed immediately. And that was sort of my introduction to Georgia. And, and they are the most generous of people. 
They have this tradition of singing as well. They sing and they drink beautiful wine and they eat gorgeous food and it's at the heart of their culture and at the heart of the culture is also this idea that a guest is you know is is one of the best things you can be you must honor your guests beyond anything so i have to reiterate go to georgia it is stunning you will be treated like kings and queens um they have so much beautiful history they've got mountains they've got uh, the most incredible architecture and 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 also this incredibly um, troubled history, which you know you can see etched on the walls of of their buildings. But they have a, a people who whose spirit is just filled with love, and yeah, it, it was magical filming there. And and all these odd idiosyncrasies that you kind of get on certain film sets, and in particular, that's why I was sort of enjoying it so much because it it's so odd, but it's also so wonderful. You know these sort of random little shacks that would turn up and make the most amazing sort of cheesy bread. I mean, you've ever eaten in your life. Don't <laughs> go there on a diet. It's not going to happen. Um, y y yeah, and <laughs> so you're out in the middle in freezing cold and they will just come and feed you this beautiful food that is filled with love and it's ridiculous and you sit on plastic chairs in the middle of winter wonderlands and... They have, they do have toilets on the edge of cliffs, <laughs> and the whole, and that's why I was laughing at that as well because <laughs> Ben had been talking about this for ages, going, Matt, Miana, you've got to see this. It's the best toilet in the world. <laughs> they were like, what's the best toilet in the world? We've got to check this out. And it wasn't just us; it was the entire crew. Everyone who wasn't needed for that shot was there. So <laughs> that's that shot when Matt's going up to that outdoor loo. There was all of us, about a hundred, going, wicked, <laughs> on the <laughs> other side of camera. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was, it so was very That was a real facility, you didn't make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, very, very much real, yes, yes. <laughs> Where it was, we didn't move it at all. <laughs> the idea is that what you produce falls into a void. It's very, um, <laughs> yeah, very, su very successful system, I think, yeah. <laughs> so have you ever been invited? Has anybody ever mooted you the idea of doing a kind of epic film about a country's history? Um, no, sadly, no one's um, no one's come to me. They may not now. Um, <laughs> I mean, recently, I've been I've been approached to to write a Chinese Christmas comedy set in Germany, which is <laughs> which is now what I'm I'm writing at the moment. That's I, I get that more that kind of offer. Um, I. Th Pa Pavel and I were thinking of. Do you remember Peter Weber? I mean, I, uh, Peter, if you're here today, please shout. Uh, um, he 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 made some some successful TV, and then he made uh, Girl with the Pearl Earring, uh, which was you know a very nice um, film with with a decent budget and with Scarlett Johansson and um, cinematographer Eduardo Serra, and all very beautiful and nice. And then he kind of disappeared. Um, he was. I think this is right. I, I should be careful now that we're in Britain and, and Peter lives here. But, uh, and I don't know the exact facts of the case, but he, I think he was basically <laughs> offered a job by the, the royal family of Oman to make a film about the royal family of Oman. Uh, why they are the royal family of Oman, because... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> You know the, these tribes fighting in the dunes, and you know the one family becomes successful, and then you know blah blah. blah. Um, and for, I think for years he kind of disappeared to make this uh, film, which no, which no one has seen. Um, um, and uh, in Georgia, where we were shooting, they there was this uh, you know problem with the Abkhazia war and so on, and and. Uh, I think the Russians made the film first, which was kind of pro-Russian version of the of the war. And the Georgians got kind of annoyed and decided they were going to hire Rennie Harlan. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know what you think about the work of Rennie Harlan, but I'll <laughs> just let that rest. Um, <laughs> Rennie Harlan to come and direct an action movie about the war in Abkhazia, um, which they spent a lot of money on, and again, which no one has seen. So, I mean, these, these things happen. This, this stuff happens in this world. Oh, and of course, in yeah, North Korea, they actually kidnapped a, a film director from South Korea who was quite successful. The, the, not Kim Jong-un, but the, the one, the, the guy that, that died recently, the previous president. 
was kind of pissed off that North Korea made crap films, and so they they kidnapped a director from South Korea with his wife, who was a good actress, and and brought it, brought him to North Korea. This is a true story. Brought him to North Korea and forced him to make films. So <laughs> these things happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, please kidnap me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ava I'm available from March. <laughs> so, so you said that film hasn't really been seen in Georgia so far. Are there plans that it will be? Yeah, yeah it was shown in the Batumi Film Festival, um, which is um, a, a small... F I've been there. I've been invited there. It's a small, pleasant <laughs> film festival, but... Um, uh, uh, not no, March. In March. In, oh, in March, apparently. It's in, when was it in October? Anyway... Maybe it's changed. It's now in March. It's it's coming out in Georgia in March. Is that right? It's, oh, it will be released in Georgia in March. 